On behalf of the Centers for Integrative Medicine and Health, I'd like to welcome you to this week's installment of Wellness Wednesday. Wellness Wednesday is designed to bring in brief tools for wellness that will benefit our colleagues and our community. I'm here along with my colleague today, Tim Michaels, and we are looking at the impact of a process called mindful walking. And just before we started to record, I said to Tim, this is just such fun. I so enjoy uh, the process of recording these Wellness Wednesdays and sharing this information uh, together with Tim and myself, but also with all of you. So why is it, Kathy? Why do you find this so exciting, doing these topics? It's, it's been um, very intellectually stimulating to talk about these topics and figure out how do we bring them to people um, at large? How do we help people take these really simple processes and sort of incorporate them into their daily lives? So it's been great fun. And for these tools that have meant so much to me and for so many other patients, it's such a nice, um, it's such a nice format to bring these to, to others. So I really appreciate that, and I've been thinking a lot because we're in spring, um, and it's time to start planting. And I've never been a great one about starting anything from seeds, but I tried it last year, and I'm trying it this year. And for me, um, what I've been feeling really good about Wellness Wednesday is that it's like planting a seed. Um, I have to let go of the expectation that it's going to grow into a wild forest that many, many people will be able to sit under the trees that I planted. But I, I am okay that if one or two people listen to it and it benefits them, then that trickle effect, that it's gonna change somebody around them. So I keep motivating myself by saying, um, in this moment, I can plant this one thought and I'm not gonna worry about how many people hear it or see it. So I am excited about doing it. And I like this idea of planting and trusting that what will grow is what's going to grow. I agree. And it also provides such a nice place to go back to because the message doesn't always come through on the first go around. Sometimes you have to listen to it again. And so having these videos in prominent places will be able to have people have those resources they can share or just go back to for themselves. Right. And I think that today's topic about mindful uh, walking really kind of ties into this notion. You know, you plant these beautiful flower beds and only one comes up. Um, and you lose the whole excitement about the planting and the feeling of the dirt. But it really, I think what it is, is, is being mindful in this very current moment, and all I'm doing today is planting. And I'm not going to worry about what's coming after this. So since we're both enjoying this book, do you want to talk to us about the book um, that got us excited about this mindful walking piece? Absolutely. So this book called The Weekly Soul. 52 Meditations Meaning Joyful, and, um, Meaning Joyful and Peaceful Living. So this book was written by one of my teachers and mentors, Fred Craigie. And Fred did the spirituality and healthcare piece of my Integrative Medicine Fellowship. And each week since I finished the fellowship in, I'm sorry, each month in, since I finished the fellowship in 2012, Fred sends out a, um, just a quote on an email to, to a group of us who like to receive his words of wisdom. And this is the second book that he's written. And it is a weekly guide to just some thoughts about how we begin the week, what we think about in the week, and how we sort of gather our own self-care um, that week. And so I bought two copies in December. Um, we have been going weekly through these um, these weekly readings. And it's been it's been really lovely to kind of begin our weeks together and um, to kind of uh, have something to center the work that we do. Um, and the most recent one on week 14 was about taking a thoughtful and conscious and mindful step. So right. can you tell us, Tim, just a little bit about what you thought about when you read that chapter 14? Well, first of all, so I deeply appreciate you sharing books with me. And I think now that we've been partnering on different things for a while, we each have a stack of books that we've been buying for each other. And my commitment, if I have to dust them one more week, they've got to go, but um, <laughs> this one's still on the top. First, what I really like about this is it's a thought for seven days. So what I'm hearing a lot from people is um, trying to do mindfulness activities, meditation, trying to do something daily, may not be working for them. I happen to like that on Sunday I read the week, and it gives you one, two, or three different ways that you can try to keep your attention to it. 
what I really enjoyed about this one was it, it talks about mindful walking, but he really talks about it as a way to get to know yourself again. And the reason I really wanted us to bring it up today is whether you are in a healthcare setting or a classroom setting, or you've been working from home, and I think I really want to highlight the people working from home right now. Um, I want to do it for everybody, but I think sometimes the folks working from home are forgetting they have some choices, that they're forgetting how to set boundaries around their work day. Um, but the one thing that we're all doing at home, at a hospital, in a school, in a police station, wherever we are, is we have to eventually get up, if you're able to walk, and walk to something to the bathroom, to get a cup of coffee, to close an office door, to open a window, we get up and walk. And it's interesting how we use those, let's say five to 10 steps. I'm either on my way to pour coffee, return to the office and realize I never put cream in. So clearly I wasn't mindful on the way to get coffee, right? Mm -hmm. So, but his notion that you use it to remember who you are. So that kind of stuck with me, his reason for wanting people to adopt mindful walking. So how, in your mind, Kathy, as you, you've done mindfulness and meditation and integrated medicine for a long time, how would mindful walking help you remember who you are? I have always used this, not mindfully, I've used it as a tool in practice to kind of give myself a break from my regular work. I didn't mm -hmm. realize at the time that it was mindfulness, but another very wise mentor said, then in the middle of the day, he would pick up his charts when we had charts to pick up uh, and bring them up to the front to be refiled himself. And a lot of physicians didn't do that, so the front desk was always very happy with him. But he said he did it completely selfishly. It was to stop, to take a break from the intellectual and often emotional challenges of providing good health care, and to kind of come back into himself just with that walk that could have been 20 steps from his office to the, to the front office. And so very early, the first year in my career, I started implementing the same thing, delivering messages or whatever I needed to do instead of doing it by email, doing it in person. But again, selfishly, because I needed, I didn't need, I wanted a break so that I could take a little step back from what I was doing, kind of center in myself a little bit and just go back more centered, better, just a little, a little more, a little more clear in my head. And so that's how I've used it. And it was just beautiful to read um, the, the comments and Fred, for, that Fred gave this week, uh, in this week 14. Um, there's a specific one um, in this week on page 73, and I want to quote it. And it says it's coming from a physician colleague of Fred's, right? And it says, before I go into an exam room, I pause for 10 seconds with my feet planted on the floor and remind myself why I want to be there for the patient I am about to see, why I want to be there. So it's interesting he phrased it that way. And Kathy, I've heard you talk about something similar for our Trinity Health providers. Um, you refer to it though as um, two feet, one breath? Two right? feet, one breath. Two feet right. outside the door, one breath to leave any distractions outside the door that we don't want to bring in the room with us but I do, and so I think that's good for the patient, right? So we leave all the, the confounding factors outside the door. But I love this little twist that Fred brings to it with his colleague, that it's not necessarily only about the person in the room. It's about the person walking into the room right. as well. And so that combination with two feet, one breath, I love. I think it just right. expands that tool even a little bit more. Right, and I think that that is very much his point in this week, is to use it to remember who you are. So there's another example about uh, a mother, um, and she just gives this response to, it would be really great if I could meditate for 45 minutes a day, but I'm a working mother. I have two children. I'm trying to get ready to leave the day. I'm trying to get the kids ready. My husband's someplace else getting ready. We're, it's just not structured that way. Yet, practicing the mindful walking between rooms even, you know, um, to get yourself regrounded before you leave your room getting ready and you go start at the kids who are not getting themselves ready, remembering who we are. And, and I think that's kind of hard, but I think if you broke it down, let's think about our people working from home. Mm -hmm. So I knew one, one person I used to work with, sometimes she'd be upstairs in a bedroom, sometimes she'd be in the living room, her husband would be seated on the couch, the kids are doing homework. And it's really hard to try to remember in that moment who you are. 
So are you mom? Are you the health stream administrator? Are you the spouse? Are you the daughter? Who are you? So, you know, it's that interesting thing about if you leave a room that you've been closed in all day and you're about to go down the hallway to the kitchen or a family room or just the bathroom, is, is to use a combination of mindful walking and your breathing um, to settle all the thoughts down and come back to, you know, why do you want to go to that next task? Why do you want to go into the kitchen and start dinner? What, you know, who are you in that moment? And it, and it sounds pretty simple, but the more you practice it, the more you realize we're out of practice at being clear about who we authentically are. I agree. And I think just that piece of working at home, trying to do all the pieces you used to do at work in a, in a completely adult environment, a little more quiet, a little more focused, it can be very challenging to make those shifts because we bring all that with us, right? We bring Absolutely. all of who we are to work and we have all of who we are at home. And so they, they may be a little artificial feeling to begin those breaks, that, that mindful walking, that separation between the kitchen and wherever you're calling your office. But the more we do them in our heads, we come back, the more we make those separations in our heads, we come back to that centered person and you can transition a little more easily from being the school teacher with the kids that are, are working from home to the administrator for workflows or, or whatever, whatever it is in your work. Just that conscious right. separation to come back to who we are, knowing we bring all of it with us. We just have right. to prioritize a little bit depending on who, with whom we're dealing. So I, I think um, if I go back to the, the example that he gave for the physician, uh, his friend, and it said, I remind myself why I want to be there is one way. The other thing that I would suggest to people is as you are heading from your kitchen to the living room, from your office to the car, from one patient room to the next, right, um, is to develop one or two mantras that work for those moments. As you are walking, I mean, this sounds a little silly, but really in your head start saying, I am walking and try to focus on your breath, right? I am a nurse who's about to bring healing, you know, as you're washing your hands. Um, it's as simple as walking down the hallway at home saying, I am okay, I am safe, I am going to make dinner now. And I, I use the two combined together to, and if all else fails, just be in your head saying, I am walking. And keep bringing your attention to your feet and how they sound on the floor. And that in and of itself can bring your stress levels down. Absolutely. So, yeah. I, again, this is a great book if anybody's willing to try it. Um, we'll make sure it comes up at the end of the video. Um, it's a lovely way to set your week and set an intention for the week that you, in this case, for week 14, we were really focusing on mindful walking as a way to help us remember who we are today. So thanks, Kathy. Another great Wellness Wednesday. Thanks, Tim, and we look forward to next week.